Security tightened around the venue of Tuesday's state funeral of uh, former Japanese Prime Minister uh, Shinzo Abe. Foreign leaders landing in Tokyo include Kamala Harris, uh, also the Vietnam's president, Nguyen Huang Phuc, uh, Philippine pres Vice President Sara Duterte, and uh, more expected, like India and Australia's prime ministers. There are, have been eyebrows raised uh, over this uh, funeral, uh, particularly uh, uh, after revelations concerning the ruling party's close ties with the Unification Church of late uh, Korea, South Korean uh, preacher Song Young Moon, accused of brainwashing its adherents and doubts over the legitimacy of a state event with links to pre-World War II imperial Japan, the government uh, dismissing the criticism. The government has decided that it is appropriate to hold the funeral as an official national event with attendees from overseas. I will continue to explain the idea that it is not expected that every citizen will mourn nor should the state funeral be seen as a political one. For more, let's go to Washington. Shihoko Goto is deputy director for the Asia program at the Wilson Center think tank. Thank you for speaking with us here on France 24. It's great to be here. How did we go from uh, the, the world's shock over the assassination of Shinzo Abe to now According to one poll, more than 60 percent of the Japanese who are against the way this state funeral is unfolding. Right. Well, those against um, having the state funeral say that it's constitutional, that at the end of World War II, Japan coming out of a fascist you know, um, country, um, in order to become a democratic country, it banned this idea of having um, state-sanctioned funerals where people were forced to, to attend. Um, in celebration of either the emperor or the political leadership. There's only been one state funeral for a Japanese leader to date um, since the end of World War II, and that was for Japan's first prime ministers um, at, after following the aftermath of World War II. The current government's argument for having this are twofold. One is that Abe was Japan's longest serving prime minister in the history of Japan, and secondly, that his his um, demise was very dramatic. He was assassinated uh, during a um, campaign speech for one of his uh, political protégés um, two months ago in, in early July. So there has been a lot of shock. Um, this should have been a, a point for the country to rally around, um, but that has really not been the case. According to some press reports, his uh, alleged assailant uh, is garnered a measure of sympathy because he was angry over uh, his mother being brainwashed uh, by uh, the Unification Church. Yeah, so it's interesting. This gunman uh, shot uh, the prime minister at a public event um, here in this country in the United States. That would have really led to a lot of discussions about gun control or um, lack thereof. In Japan, only about 10 people are killed by guns, and the prime minister happened to be one of them this year. Um, but there hasn't really been a discussion about gun control. Instead, there's been a lot of focus on the assassin himself, that this was a man who was deeply troubled because of his mother giving away all of the family's assets to support the church, the Unification Church in this case. Um, and the Unification Church was something that um, Prime Minister Abe and some of his other um, party members of the ruling Liberal Democratic Party have uh, ties to. And so there has been this idea of, one, the assassin, um, there's a lot of public sympathy for a, a, a troubled man of, uh, who has been seen as a victim of a cult, um, and a lot of concern about the political relationship between this um, church and the ruling Liberal Democratic Party. There's always in politics uh, this temptation to uh, uh, to court uh, cult leaders, strong religious leaders, because it's a, a reservoir of votes. Absolutely. So um, in a democracy, the the proof is that um, politicians need to fundraise. 
and they fundraise from the private sector, the public sector, from religious groups. Um, there, there are some that are more legitimate or seen as more legitimate than others. The Unification Church has come under a great deal of controversy in Japan over the decades for a number of reasons, but this has certainly led to a greater scrutiny about the practices that the church has in kind of brainwashing its, its um, uh, followers and forcing its um, followers to really cough up all of the money that they have um, for the church, to the church. There's also a, a, a internal party uh, uh, argument that's been put forth uh, for this uh, state funeral. Uh, Fumio Kishida, the new prime minister, uh, trying to shore up support among hardline conservatives within the ruling liberal Democrats. Yeah. So there's a lot of justification as to why the state funeral should take place. Um, I personally believe that the strongest argument is that there is expectation from the world to have a state funeral. So um, regardless of the domestic controversies about and, and opposition about whether a leader should have a state funeral or not, um, other countries expect Japan to, to host a, um, to have a funeral, a grand funeral for its leader that was assassinated so publicly and in, in, in such a shocking way. And you see that because you have all these um, world leaders, including um, the US Vice President Kamala Harris and, and a number of key leaders who will be there. And bear in mind that the funeral is also an occasion, uh, yes, to um, for these people to pay respect to Shinzo Abe, but it's also an opportunity for them to meet in the sidelines, not unlike the at the uh, Queen Elizabeth's uh, funeral or at the sidelines of the United Nations. People actually start talking. And uh, Kishida will be hosting a number of bilateral meetings, not just with Kamala Harris, but with the newly appointed pri um, Prime Minister of Australia, the leadership of Cambodia, of India, and all these other countries. And so it is an opportunity for Japan to have this um, check-in, so to speak, with global leaders. Shioko Goto, Deputy Director for the Asia Program at the Wilson Center. Many thanks for speaking with us from Washington. Thank you so much. Stay with us.